Sunderland away then in the Checker Trade Trophy. What do you make of that? It's a good draw. It's a nice stadium uh, on a Tuesday evening. Uh, probably the hardest tie out of all the clubs left in it, but uh, it's a good tie and we're still in the competition, so it gives another chance to uh, go and play against one of the big boys. Obviously, it's a competition that divides opinion, let's say, and, and I think that'll probably be on show that night at, at the Stadium of Light. It's a stadium mm. that holds 50,000 people. There won't be that many there. Uh, could, could you do without it as a, as a squad right now? Uh, no, not really. We've got things in between that, Charlie, to be fair. And I think we've got to look after the things in between before we get to Sunderland on December the 4th. It's probably right at the back of our mind, even though it's a thing that's just come out freshly today. So we've got other things to concentrate on, which we'll be spending more of our attention on. How different is the mood in the camp this week since the win on Wednesday? Uh, didn't see the boys yesterday. They had their own recovery session planned. Saw them today. They were jovial today. The session had been bright today. Uh, a few of them are still sore from uh, from Wednesday night because of the effort that they put in. But, you know, we, like I said on Wednesday evening, we got our just rewards for the effort that we put into the game. And people have probably worked as hard, if not harder, than they have all season. And, and that's that's our starting point now. Um, you mentioned after the game on Wednesday how different it is being on the touchline with the first team yeah. to, to being with the youth team. I wonder how, I mean, it's, it's very early, it's only been a few days, but how, how much of an impact that's had on, on your day-to-day -day life? How different is your day now as opposed to preparing for a youth team game? It's the first time I've done this. Uh, youth team game is more behind the scenes, planning with other coaches. Obviously now I have to deal with the, the operations, the running the day-to-day, -day. obviously myself and Paul, uh, dealing with the press, uh, dealing with the players and getting themselves up for trying to get three points on Saturday afternoon, which is the most important thing for anybody's week. Uh, so yeah, there's been more things that I've had to do which I haven't done normally, but it's not something I haven't done before. I've done it on a lower scale, obviously, with, with Ilkeston. I've been assistant manager in, uh, in the conference. Uh, but this is a whole different ball game. And how are you finding dealing with the dastardly press? Uh, you're okay. <laughs> you're okay. I've, I'm, the question haven't been too taxing uh, and not too intrusive. So at the minute, I'm all right. Thank you. I'm say, give it time. Um, <laughs> what's, what's your relationship like with the players? Uh, I find it good. Uh, obviously, with the reserves, we're a little bit more uh, low key than playing first team matches. So there is a kind of a a friendship between the players and myself and I think it's come out this week that they're not afraid to ask me questions where they probably wouldn't be uh, that okay asking the main manager the questions. So I am the kind of go-between players and management, uh, which I'm quite comfortable with. I've done it before, uh, but obviously the main decision-making comes down between myself, Paul and Norm. Uh, and when it comes to decisions on making a team, you know, the book stops with us. And if players aren't happy, fine, I'm sure we'll get some knock on the door asking why they're not playing, which is standard. Uh, how how is that dynamic of the three wise men working out with yourself and Norman and Paul? That's very polite. Three wise men. <laughs> uh, Paul's obviously the most senior, being our technical director. So Paul's had a major say in, in what's been happening. Myself and Norm are more of a supporting role, uh, and obviously dealing with the players day to day. Uh, but no, it's worked quite well. I've known Paul for a long time. I used to clean his boots when I was a kid across at Forest. And he still reminds me of that every day and tells me to make him better cups of coffee. <laughs> and I've obviously known Norm since he's been 17 as well. So we, we get on really well and I think that helps. How weird is football that it can bring things full circle like that with you and Harty? Uh, very weird. And I, I don't think it will ever get any less weird You know why the game's still being played. Um, is, it, is it kind of odd, the position that you're in, knowing how to judge it, how, how to prepare the players for the weekend when... It, it could all change at any moment if, if the chairman goes and appoints a, a manager. Uh, no, we, we have a complete understanding of what our role is now. Uh, like I said, if somebody came in before Saturday, they'd take the team and maybe prep it for Saturday. Obviously, that doesn't like it's going to be the case unless something changes drastically in the next few hours. We'll take charge of the Cheltenham game. When it comes to next week, we've got a reserve team fixture on Tuesday, which I'll take as normal up at Doncaster. Uh, and then we're planning for the, the week after going up to Morecambe. So we live in life a bit day to day uh, because that's the only way we can do it and we can only plan for for the foreseeable future. So you're doing two jobs at the moment then, still taking care of the resis as well? Yeah, I have a proper job. I have a proper <laughs> job where my, my sole responsibility is developing young players that we've managed to get onto the first team bench this year and get some onto the grass. But we have an under-23s competition in the Premier League that we're still in. We play Southampton. The end of this month, we go to Doncaster Tuesday afternoon. So, yeah, it's all hands on deck, but, you know, it's what I love doing. Uh, how tricky is it then to, to pick a team at this point, uh, coming into it? And I imagine all of the players are suddenly full of the joys of spring in autumn. They're all desperate to play. 
uh, which is the only way it can be. But we can only pick 11, we can only pick seven substitutes. Uh, but competition is vital. Uh, we're missing Steady and obviously we're missing Kane, we've missed him for the last few games. But, uh, but everybody wants to play, but like I said, I can only pick 11 players, but the ones who go out there have to do themselves justice for themselves and the club. Uh, Steady and Hemmings then still not going to be available for this weekend? Not sure, not sure until tomorrow. Uh, but like I say, they, they've been a major loss. Obviously, John's experience and Kane's goal scoring. Uh, but obviously, this week, Christian's got his first hat trick at Notts County. NJ scored another goal and they played up top together. So, you know, we're OK. Do you like that dynamic between the two of them up there? Yeah, I like, I like Christian's goal scoring ability. Like I say, he struggled to get goals before the midweek game. Uh, and yeah, everybody sees what quality Enzo brings, whether he plays down the middle or he plays down the sides. Uh, so they do complement each other quite well, yes. Matt Tootle still going to be out? Yeah, Matt's not going to be fit. No, he's struggling. Uh, obviously, we've got Elliot Hewitt who's suspended this weekend as well. Uh, so, you know, all hands on deck. Yeah, it will be one of those occasions where you've really got to use the entire mm. squad. Unfortunately, you're blessed with quite a large squad. Yeah, we've got a lot of players. We've got quite a few of the young ones are injured as well. So we can only pick from what we've got. Um, we'll try and do our best job to pick a team to go out and be competitive and get results on Saturday. I asked you after the game on Wednesday night if you'd given any thought to wanting the job yourself full-time. You said you'd not thought about it yet. Have you thought about it now? Yeah, I've got a game Tuesday afternoon at Doncaster, 1 o'clock. That's my, that's my senior role at present, yes. Something tells me you knew that question was coming Absolutely. and that was your stock answer for it. It was. I've been planning that for days. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so you have given it some thought then, but you're just not going to tell us? No, I, I obviously obviously thought about it, but it's it's not something that is in my immediate thought process. Uh, obviously, things like this is new for me, and you're classed as the caretaker manager for now. Uh, and like I said, this is completely brand new, doing press at this scale. Uh, but my major role is preparing players for tomorrow, uh, and then planning for Monday, and then taking a session Monday morning, then going to reserve team fixture Tuesday afternoon. But you would like to be a manager one day um, in the football league, I'm guessing. Uh, yeah, when and where? Or I don't know. I don't know whether it's here or whether it's somewhere else. I don't really know. Uh, but like I said, my role is important here because we have a good bunch of young pros. Uh, we need to get in the first team, and the club needs to benefit from their their progression. So full of admiration as I am for your Doncaster answer, I will move on and ask you what you expect from Cheltenham this weekend. Uh, they'll be direct, uh, they'll be physical, they'll be strong and we have to compete. We have to compete and hopefully our qualities uh, that we do possess in the team uh, will show. So we need to be uh, strong as a unit, not as just a, a back three or a back five or a back six or a back seven, whatever we play. Uh, we're going to have to be really strong and stand up to any physicality and hopefully we can uh, show our skills and get goals at the end of the pitch like we did on Wednesday evening. Yeah, and as we already said, Wednesday evening was so different to youth team football. Yeah. Um, crikey, I mean, Saturday is going to be very different to, to Wednesday evening with the different atmosphere and the, the, the brand new pressure that's on that game. Yeah, I, I don't think Cheltenham will play the style that Doncaster played. Uh, they had a lot of uh, midfield players playing in there, Doncaster, with good rotation and I've known Grant McCann's teams for a while. And they play in a certain way. I don't think we'll get that style of play against Cheltenham. But we've done our homework uh, with our analysts and we've put a presentation on for the players to look at today and it'll be uh, revisited tomorrow and we have a game plan to obviously combat it. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Steve, when you, when you first got hold of the players after Harry, Harry left the club, what did you say to them as a caretaker? What, did you tell them the slate's clean and it's all the chance for them to impress whoever's watching? Or? Uh, no, we just said that you know myself and Paul and we're here to support them. A lot of the onus is on the players uh, to perform better, which we obviously know all about. But uh, no, there was no mention of clean slate. Uh, everybody would get picked on merit as such. But uh, no, we're just there to support the players. But they've got to come to the party and give us more for you know for their performances every week. Are you surprised? I mean, because you obviously know the players and you see their quality. Are you surprised by the position that they're in? Uh, yes. Uh, obviously, there was a there was a big uh, push for Notts County to be favourites for promotion, even though there was a lot of change in the summer. And obviously, the Kevin left and Harry came in, and there was a change of style. So it, it has been turbulent, and it's not been ideal. Uh, but no, we we shouldn't be in this position. But you're judged on what football matches you win, and we need to win football matches to get out of this situation and move away up the league. Mm. Uh, um, specifically about Cheltenham, I mean, it's it's a it's a big game, isn't it? In the context of the bottom of the table, it's massive. Yeah, obviously they're they're very close to ourselves. Uh, we need to get away from this bottom two. 
Uh, but the performance on Saturday will hopefully merit that and get us where we need to go. And how's Christian after after his hat trick? I know the kick man had to go and fe fetch the ball, or fetch yeah. the ball, didn't he? He's good. Yeah, obviously he was he was delighted with Wednesday evening, uh, and I think everybody, myself, staff, players, fans, will be delighted if he gets another ball tomorrow. It'd be great for us. I was going to say it, it was interesting because while he was being interviewed, the the, the players having a, a good crack with him, which proved that despite the problems at the bottom of the table, the team spirit seems to be very very good. Team spirit's generally good in football clubs, but it's even better when you're winning games. Uh, coming straight off a win, scoring four goals, going through in a competition, spirit is generally a little bit higher than normal. Uh, so, yeah, it, the boys are close. They're, they're very good squad mentality. Uh, but like I say, you're, you're just on winning football matches, not how good your mates are.